Greetings and salutations, people of the internet. This is Master RBG, and today I have something very special for you. A first for this channel, in fact, because today we will be reviewing a racing game. And while I may not know much about living my life a quarter mile at a time, I do know a thing or two about arcade-style racing titles. I played a bit of Daytona USA, a little Mario Kart now and then, but of course, we can't review something mundane or normal on this channel. We just don't do that sort of thing here, so today's racing game has a twist. This won't be a cut and dry race to the finish in standard cars. These will be hover cars using digital ink on the racetrack to speed up their team's vehicles and slow down those of their opponents. Confused? Don't worry. Stay tuned and see it in action for yourself. Because today we're reviewing Trailblazers. Oh, I'm sorry, were you expecting more of a segue? You must have forgotten, we're doing a racing game today. We haven't got time for that kind of thing. So, we're hitting the ground running, baby. Alright, so you're obviously seeing that I am painting the track. At least when I have a meter full. Let me see, there we go. That little teal colored meter up top there. That indicates how much ink I've actually got on hand. Now obviously, once it's depleted, I can't put anything on the track, so I can just wait around, wait for it to refill, and then I can go right back to marking territory. And of course, the more I drive along our colored area of the map, the faster I will go. Boosting faster and faster as I go along. Unfortunately, this is like the starting level, and I'm not very good at the game yet. So, do bear that in mind. <laughs> A little rusty. Also, moving at these speeds is a little difficult to control sometimes. But you're getting the general gist. So, mark territory. You drive around on top of the territory you've marked. You drive faster. Pretty cut and dry. You get it so far, right? Cool. We move on to the next segment. Okay, so moving on, now you get to see what those little traps do. Okay, so that little translucent hexagon you saw earlier just laid down a nice big path in my team's colors for me, at least when I went through it. Now, of course, if one of my opponents had gone through it, it would have laid down a track of their color, which would have slowed me down. Which is another thing you're getting to see here. When I'm traveling on the teal color, I move faster. If I move on the regular unpainted segment, I move at regular speed. And if I travel over the purple segment, which is my enemy team's color, I move slower. See? I told you at the beginning all this would make sense later. See? It's all coming together. Woo! Not gonna lie, this, this got a lot easier once I figured out how to actually handle the vehicle here. Anywho, now we can go ahead and move on to the next segment. Yeah! Now, of course, this wouldn't be much of a racing game if we didn't have other racetracks to use. And I'll give a lot of credit to this game. If nothing else, it has a lot of variety in its racetracks. Although, uh, not gonna lie, the very first one is my all-time least favorite. Because that one is kind of a piece of junk. Or at least it is with the vehicle they start you off with, which, trust me, cannot corner to save its life. Really can't. At least not on that track, anyway. Now you see, here I'm handling way better. Oops. Okay, I spoke too soon, that's my own fault. But you get the gist. I can handle a great deal better on this one because the track's a lot wider this time, and the curves are a lot gentler, which makes a lot more sense for the handling of the vehicles in question here. Whereas the first one, I feel it was taken from another game almost. Or at least that's how it feels anyway. Like, yeah, this is a generic racing track, not really meant for hover vehicles and paint. They just kind of repurposed it to use it for that. Whereas this one, this one feels much more at home in this style of game. So I know this one was custom made. 
And yes, the colors of your ink, they do change up with each match. It's not always going to be teal. So this time, it's yellow. Next time, who knows? Could be any number of colors. Which I guess we'll go ahead and skip ahead to, uh, now-ish. now -ish sounds good. Now, of course, I've already talked about different tracks. Now it's time to talk about other things that are, you know, available in this game. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about racers and vehicles real quick. Now, to the best of my knowledge, different racers don't actually change anything. But the cars do. And this one is a little different. The Tadpole operates differently from our default car. Uh, unfortunately, the thing I'm slightly worried about is that the handling is actually lower on this one than it was on the default. Which has me a tiny bit nervous, but okay, we're just, uh, we're just gonna roll with it, okay? Cool. Alright, uh, let's do this! Ooh, okay, slightly missed it. Ooh, green track this time. Ah, uh, there we go. Ooh. I missed that one too. Yeah, I can see the handling really is lower here. Okay. And this is another one of the tracks that has branching paths, which is fine. I like those to a certain extent. Mostly because, especially in this case, I don't think this car would survive if another car ran into it. I really don't think it would. Okay, let's try and try to fill it in back here. There we go. Let's cover this track like a meal. Woo! There we go. I like the bumpers on this track. That's that's rather nice. Okay. We'll do a little bit better. No, no, we're getting we're getting rammed around like we're a pinball over here. Okay. It's fine. We'll make do. Ow. Okay. There we are. Okay, covering up all your track. At least all the track that I can manage while I still have a full gauge. There we are. Woo! Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting I'm getting kind of used to the tadpole, sort of. It does ramp up speed a bit faster than the other. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was Trailblazers. Likely the most bizarre racing game I've ever played. Although I covered a fair bit in the video so far, I feel there are two more subjects that really need to be discussed. The first is that this game has a story mode, and a surprisingly good one at that, for a racing game anyway. I was very careful to cut those segments out of this video to keep it spoiler free, cause, you know, most of my reviews usually are, but trust me, it has a little something for everyone. Robots, galactic rulers fallen from grace, space hillbillies, and so much more. The second thing that should be addressed is that this game supports cross-platform play. So, you and five of your buddies can play together on whatever system they're currently on. And by the way, it is possible to do a three versus three match. I didn't show one in the video, but it can be done. Which is why I say you and five buddies. Now, while I did enjoy the game for the most part, I'm going to have to address my one grievance with the game. That being how floaty the vehicles feel. Now, I realize they're hover vehicles, but I mean, they all kind of feel floaty. Even the heavier ones that are supposed to have better handling only sometimes feel like they do. It's not game-breaking, but it can detract from the fun when your car is seemingly sent flying by every little thing, regardless of how big or small it is. If you guys ever do a big update for this game or make a sequel, Please make fixing this issue a priority. The game currently runs for 30 bucks and is available on PlayStation 4, Switch, and Windows PCs. If you're a hardcore racing game fan, then I'd recommend looking elsewhere for your next fix. This one's probably not quite for you. 
If you're a casual racing fan who wants to try something different, then I'd say definitely give this one a try. And obviously, if you aren't a racing game fan at all, eh, well, let me put it to you like this. If you liked what you saw here today, then I'd wait around for a decent sale before diving into this one. If not, I guess just avoid it. But you never know. Anywho, that's all the time we got for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed making it for you. If you enjoyed it, hey, hit that thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more reviews and silliness from me in the future, hit that subscribe button. And if you'd like to be the very first on your block to be alerted the moment I post any new content here on YouTube, hit that notification bell to be the first on your block to know when I post anything here. And if you'd like some suggestions for other videos made by yours truly, then how about these? Over here, you can check out my review from last time for a game called Moonlighter, a bizarre hybrid of roguelite and business simulator. Sound weird? Oh, it plays even weirder. But go give it a look-see if you're interested. And over here, we have my previous Abridged Let's Play for Fortnite. And, well, even for this channel, things got weird. Check out either one, they're both fantastic, just like you guys have been. Until next time, this is Master RBG, signing off.